If you would have told me that Flappy Bird was coming back, well, I would have just pinched myself because I must have been dreaming. But it's true, it's back, and of course, it's coming back with a big ol' dookie of controversy as it's being launched on Telegram and adding crypto to the game. You may have seen other creators cover this already, so I won't go over it too much, but Flappy Bird is back. They all are now adding new characters and new game modes. But of course, this isn't just the normal old school Flappy Bird game from a decade ago. They say the beloved core gameplay remains the same, but now you'll have the option to use Web3 features. No Web3 wallet connection required to play and the game will never have NFTs. Well, if they're not using NFTs, then what are they adding? Well, it's crypto. They're adding a way to rank up on the leaderboard and then do their play to airdrop campaign where at the end of it, you're gonna be able to earn tokens. Now, this is not new. Telegram games have been all the rage in crypto because, well, a lot of crypto people already use Telegram. They're integrating games into it and there's a bunch of clicker tap to earn games as they're called on the Telegram app now. But of course, the world of Web3 gaming is already highly controversial, which led to many people to think, what is going on here? Flappy Bird was removed 10 years ago. Why is this coming back? Is it with the original creator? And with all this controversy, Flappy Bird puts out a statement. Now, I didn't even know on Twitter that now they have, uh, I guess, the audiences can put and link into other tweets. This is Dong Nguyen, and he says, no, I have no related with their game. I did not sell anything. I also don't support crypto. So if you don't know what happened, the trademark was considered abandoned, and then another company picked it up. You can see the legal here, uh, abandoned by Dong and Gamertech holding registered for it. Because the original creator didn't want anything to do with the game, I'm assuming he just forgot about it or didn't want the ownership of the IP, but that means that someone else could file for it and pick it back up. So here's Flappy Bird's official statements that they put out on Twitter. The Flappy Bird Foundation, which there's a foundation for Flappy Bird, would like to provide a direct response to current questions regarding its recent announcement of the return of Flappy Bird. The Flappy Bird Foundation is a team of passionate fans of the Flappy Bird game published in 2013. After the game was pulled from stores in 2014, like many others, we found ourselves unable to stop thinking about the game. Okay, yes, the game was super addictive. We all played it 10 years ago, but are you really telling me there was a foundation created for this game that were unable to let this simple game go? The Flappy Bird trademark and brand was abandoned following the game's takedown. Wanting to revive the game, we filed an application for the trademark and set out to bring the Flappy Bird game back to the community. Gosh, that seems like such a fake made up story to me, but even if it's true, just let it go guys. The creator didn't want it out there for a reason. They go on to say the fine print. In 2018, the United States Patent and Trademark Office granted Mobile Media Partners Inc. the Flappy Bird trademark registration. Interesting that it didn't go to the Flappy Bird Foundation, which was then acquired by Game Tech Holdings LLC in 2021, who we then acquired the trademark from in August 2024. Then they go on to some statement about P.O. P.O. versus Cactus. I have no idea if that's the way to say it, but we brought on Keck, the developer of the game P.O. P.O. versus Cactus as a core founding member of the Flappy Bird Foundation. We noted the similarities between the game Keck first published in 2009 and Flappy Bird, which was published in 2013. The gameplay, level design, and the main character all appear strikingly similar. Keck has always been an enthusiastic supporter of the Flappy Bird Foundation and our plans to build on the legacy of this game and Flappy Bird. So much so that he's decided to trust the Foundation with the exclusive rights to P.O. P.O. versus Cactus. I love that through the Flappy Bird Foundation, we are able to breathe new life into the games I built and inspired. It's incredible to work alongside such a dedicated team of fans and creators who are truly passionate. Now, I've never heard of P.O. P.O. versus Cactus or however to say it, but of course the game does look strikingly similar if we flip back to over here. But this just seems so random out of nowhere. Out of, like, are you just saying, hey, that the Flappy Bird wasn't the original game? Some other creator had this exact game first, which it's not a complicated game. I'm sure there's, you know, thousands of these games before and after Flappy Bird. It's not like a, an ingenious, incredible game that took a lot of dev time or ingenuity to think about, right? Are you trying to say this, this is the real creator so that as long as you sign the real creator that inspired Flappy Bird, or Flappy Bird, you know, Dong Nguyen stole it from him. I don't know what they're trying to say with this statement, but it just seems so random and out of place, and I don't think it justifies it at all. Then lastly, they say, the mission of Flappy Bird Foundation has always been to preserve and foster the Flappy Bird game and legacy for the community. 
Now, I've never seen such a wild statement. If, if you really care about preserving the game and the legacy of the community, it already had a great legacy. The creator wanted it to die, to be taken off the shelves. And it was that. It was a great memory that we all had a decade ago. And we can just leave the legacy behind. What this is, some people are calling it a scam, but I think at best it's just a cash grab. It's like they're looking around seeing, hey, there's a bunch of players of crypto gamers on Telegram, and here's an IP that pretty much everyone's going to remember as long as they were over the age of like five back then, and let's mesh them together. And the sad part is that this is probably going to work, and indeed, it already has you know, 10,000 subscribers on Telegram. I'm sure it's only going to grow. Some of those games on there have millions and millions of subscribers to the Telegram channels and their games. You know, how many of them are humans? How many of them are bots? Who knows? Now, a lot of people are complaining that it's adding crypto, but to me, the bigger gripe I have is just recycled IP to try to get a quick buck. Games that are adding NFTs and crypto to their game and are actually building their own IP and trying to be innovative and create something new in the gaming ecosystem or creating a new game or iterating on something and making it better as long as it's with their own IP, then that's fine. We can argue all day about you know, whether the technology is useful in gaming or not, but I think the biggest crime here is stealing the IP even if you got it legally, it doesn't make it right. So maybe stealing isn't the right word, but it definitely feels like a crime against Dong Nguyen. And we see this all the time in the entertainment industry right now, whether it's gaming, crypto gaming or not, movies, TV shows, they just wanna buy up the cheapest IP because they know that someone out there is going to watch or play or interact with that IP even if they do a horrible, horrible job with it, there's a pretty good chance that they're gonna at least make their money back, if not more. So honestly, it's just really sad that this has gone down. I needed to rant about it, and I wanna know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.